Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome to our faith community of Sacred Heart Parish on the, as we celebrate our solemnity of Pentecost. My name is Brian Mayhem. Pentecost culminates in our 50-day 50, 50 celebration of the Easter mystery. On this feast, we celebrate both the unity of all Christian peoples of many cultures and the coming of the Spirit to set us aflame with zeal to spread our faith to all peoples and places in the world. So we extend a special welcome to all of you. And just a word of reminder, we thank you for wearing a mask into church, but you may remove it while you are in your pew. However, please wear it when coming forward for communion or any time you're moving around in the church. Also, though, also, those of you sitting in the side pews are asked to go around to the back and come up the center aisle when receiving communion. And if you have a cell phone or pager, please turn the thing off. Today's Mass is being offered for the needs of all priests and all deacons. Now today we celebrate uh, with my daughters, Abigail and Catherine Mayhem, and our family, as both girls will receive the Sacrament of Confirmation during today's Mass. Now they have spent many months of preparing for this moment in their faith journey, and so we are grateful to be able to share in this event with you today. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the splendor of your glory may shine forth upon us, and that by the bright rays of the Holy Spirit, the light of your light may confirm the hearts of those born again by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in, in, a, in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Frisia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. like with every passing weekend we're having more and more people showing up there are probably enough people here now where i can say do we have any visitors i haven't been able to ask that in a long time so any visitors where are you visiting from from st louis oh right here in st louis okay and then where are others too from columbia, from columbia. okay okay welcome welcome everywhere father francis so welcome to everywhere yeah more and more people are showing up here um, at Mass on the weekends, so wonderful. Welcome to everybody. Have you ever had anybody um, tell you, probably all of us have had somebody say to you, oh, you know, you have a talent, or you have a gift, right? What do we usually say? What do we say? Some people say, I know. <laughs> I know I do. So a lot of times, for some reason, I don't know, we want to be all modest and say, oh, no, I don't, have, I don't really know. I really don't have a gift. But really, why do we do that? Why do we do that? Because if we do have any sort of gifts or talents, really, in a sense, how can we claim credit for it? How can we claim credit as if it's our own? We can kind of nurture, develop the talent of the gift um, that we were given by God and by our parents, you know, teaching us. But all of us do have, um, have these gifts. But what's interesting, sometimes, I don't know, I was uh, either met somebody the other day or I was heard about somebody, I can't remember, it seems like it's just not fair. Some people just get all the talent. Have you ever seen someone just has all the talent, you know? So it seems like they're different scenarios. Sometimes it seems like um, there are people who don't realize they have a certain talent, and when you actually kind of push them or encourage them, or I don't know, maybe hand them an instrument or something, it's like, oh my gosh, you know? And maybe they didn't even know they had that talent, and everybody's surprised, all these hidden talents. Other people, it seems like they um, have a certain talent, and it's, it's very obvious, but then they don't use it, and it's kind of wasted. You know, it's like, gosh, you know, if you just even really did this a little more, you'd be phenomenal. So kind of those scenarios. Another type of scenario sometimes is when, um, you know, somebody realizes that they have a talent, and they do, they nurture it. They realize it and they nurture it and they really develop it and they, they really appreciate that. Um, today, of course, we're talking about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit because we celebrate um, Pentecost, as Brian kind of mentioned uh, before Mass, um, celebrate the day, the 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord. He bestowed the Holy Spirit upon his apostles and also upon us through the sacraments. And all of us had that opportunity and that's, that's what we celebrate. So with the, um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, of course, um, I'm sure you all know in our, in our catechism, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, was it um, knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, understanding, counsel, piety, fear of the Lord, something like that, okay? Um, technically listed in the catechism, those are specifically technical um, gifts of the Holy Spirit, but they can be manifested in many different ways. Now, what is the, probably the most common um, when we think about a gift of the Holy Spirit, what is, what is the most common or probably well-known? And a lot of people think gift of tongues, right? We think of that. And that's, that's a gift, that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. But some people, I think, seem to think, oh, that's the best gift you can receive. I probably told you this story about, I was at um, some sort of a uh, charismatic event, a uh, conference, 
And there were groups of people trying to ask her, what, what gift would you like to ask of the Holy Spirit? And I said what I wanted. And they were just trying to push that tongues thing on me, the gift of tongues. They kept pushing it, like trying to sell it to me or something. And some people may think that that is the most incredible gift of the Holy Spirit. But it's not. It's just one of many gifts um, that are manifested in us. And all of us are really, um, our hearts, you know, are touched by the Lord to receive the Holy Spirit within ourselves. And, um, and there are many, many gifts. And because just like in a society, you need people to do all sorts of things. We need teachers. We need maintenance people. We need scientists. You know, we need preachers. We need all sorts of people in our society that make a society function. And so it is with our church, our beautiful church. You know, all of um, all of the people have many, many different gifts that are, are to be used. But just like um, the gifts that I mentioned kind of toward the beginning, um, it's important for all of us to be open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and really to ask the Lord, uh, what, what gift am, am I to receive from the Holy Spirit? You know, what am I supposed to do? And what is, what is my calling in a sense? And so if we have the humility to realize that, oh, okay, if we receive the gift of tongues, if we receive a uh, gift of all, any other sort of gift of the Holy Spirit, and accept that and be happy with that and, and use it to the full and do not squander it like any other sort of talent that we may have, really accept that and nurture it and let it grow within us. Um, the Holy Spirit, of course, do many, many things um, within us. As we've read uh, in the past few weeks leading up to this day, uh, to Pentecost, we've um, seen the apostles, uh, St. Paul and the others, being um, challenged in their faith and being uh, punished for their faith. And it's amazing how they seem to have like no fear, no fear. They weren't thinking of themselves. They didn't have any fear or trepidation. And I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit, because they allowed the Holy Spirit to work with them, to give them that, that grace, that courage, and that confidence. And that's what the Holy Spirit does within all of us. Um, we have a couple of uh, young people, as uh, Brian mentioned, the proud papa there. There's um, a couple of young ladies here about to receive um, the gift of uh, confirmation, another beautiful gift of, of the Holy Spirit, one of the sacraments. And um, I mentioned this at all of the, uh, the confirmations, and of course the, uh, the bishop gave me the great honor of um, doing that, the faculty to, um, to do, bestow this upon them, a great honor to do that since I've known these young ladies for a long time. And um, it is an opportunity for us um, not to, for the young people, not to think, all right, you know, I kind of graduated from the faith or something. Some people think that because, wow, whew, I'm done with all that stuff, you know. But really, hopefully, um, it is an opportunity for the young people, particularly, to realize this is another, another wonderful step in their faith life. Not the end, but another step and another beginning, in a sense, receiving the Holy Spirit even more deeply than at baptism. And so um, it's a, a great opportunity for these young ladies and really all the young people receiving confirmation um, to think about that and really allow the Holy Spirit to work within their lives and not only nurture their own relationship with God, but also in like the apostles themselves, really to um, be a mission, missionaries in the world in whatever form that may take. And so uh, let's continue to pray for them as they're about to receive uh, their confirmation. And let us pray for ourselves and let us uh, allow the Holy Spirit to work with us and each one of us to realize we all have gifts, we all have gifts and allow, I hope all of us here open our hearts to the Holy Spirit and realize that we really can't, can't live the faith fully without allowing the Holy Spirit to enter our hearts. So let us pray that we do that and be inspired by these young ladies who are about to, uh, they're getting ready, they're putting their masks on, and they're so obedient, look at them. And so uh, inspired by them, but also um, inspired by the, um, the apostles themselves and as they receive the Holy Spirit. And let us pray that we are very open to the Holy Spirit working within us and that we do great things with that beautiful gift. And at this time, also I want to mention, of course, that Catherine and Abigail are their, their given names. But Catherine has uh, chosen the name of Bonaventure, right? And then Abigail has chosen the, I hope I pronounced this correctly, she told me before Mass, Tarsisius. Tarsisius, is that right? Okay. So um, as we do the confirmation, I'll refer to them as uh, Bonaventure and Tarsisius. So now I ask um, 
young ladies to come forward with their sponsors. Dearly beloved, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which you're about to receive, will be a spiritual seal by which you will be conformed to Christ and will be made more fully members of his church. For Christ himself, anointed by the Holy Spirit and the baptism he received from John, was sent forth for the work of his ministry, to pour out on the earth the fire of the same Spirit. Therefore, you who are already baptized will now receive the power of his Spirit and be signed with his cross on your foreheads. And so you must always bear witness to his passion and resurrection before the world, so that your manner of life, as the Apostle says, may be in every place the pleasing fragrance of Christ. His mystical body, which is the Church, the people of God, receives from him diverse graces, which the same Holy Spirit distributes to individuals for the building up of that body in unity and love. Be living members of his Church, therefore, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, seek to serve all people like Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. And now, before you receive the Spirit, call to mind the faith which you professed in baptism, or which your parents and godparents professed with the Church. So I ask, the Kampramandu, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he it was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them, to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. This one we have the laying on of hands, which I will not actually lay my hands upon them. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bring them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Bonaventure, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And peace be with you. Tarsisius, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit.
Please stand. And let us now, with confidence, lift up our knees in prayer to God our Father. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, our bishops, our priests, and all men and women who serve the Church, may their awareness and welcoming of different cultures help the Church form bridges of understanding and acceptance as we build community. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of the gifts of the Spirit in our lives, may we recognize and put into practice all the gifts which we've been given, so that the body of Christ may be strong in serving the reign of God. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of unity, may God destroy all the divisions and that separate the human family and help us to recognize the common source of our life, God's love. We pray. Lord, For a spirit of faith, may we more deeply rely on God in our daily lives and trust God in the midst of hardship. We pray. Lord, For a spirit of love, may we make may we place our time, energy, and gifts at the service of others, helping them to carry their burdens and discover God's love for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of peace, may hearts be changed and turn from violence to understanding so that all may live in peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose lives have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all these prayers and the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Sisters and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of the sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth the profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in their mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, he dares to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. O oh God, who be so heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard we pray the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.